pure freaking magic. It might seem odd to you, so I'm coming on the camera today to talk about Ouija, and also to make a claim that science proves that the Ouija works. But before we can go into a proper study of what I mean in this particular video, we've got to think carefully about what a Ouija board seance really comprises of. The experimenter or experimenters sit, maybe cross-legged on the floor, or around a table with their fingers planted on the planchette. The planchette is an object, this one is just made out of fiberboard, which is free to slide over the surface of the Ouija board. That's all, nothing less, not much more. The object of using a Ouija is simply to get some variety of intelligible message from the letters on the board. That's all. Whether it truly is a spirit or spirits which are communicating with you through the Ouija device is essentially just open to debate and I would argue that's a matter for theological or religious discussion rather than something which could be proven in a scientific manner. However, at its most simple level, the Ouija device does work. The planchette itself does move around the Ouija board. During the seance, the fingers of the experimenters are placed on the planchette. And yes, one can argue very convincingly that it is the fingers of the experimenters which is moving the planchette about. A phenomena called the idiomotor effect, which was documented as early as 1852, by a man whose name I think was Carpenter. In that paper, he explained his theory that muscular movement can be independent of conscious desires or emotions. And in 1999, Ray Hyman conducted scientific tests of the idiomotor effect and wrote, quote, Honest, intelligent people can unconsciously engage in muscular activity that is consistent with their expectations, unquote. So, well, we've seen the idiomotor effect in action, up close, and we've done testing on it. The idiomotor effect also applies to Ouija boards and the planchette that people rest their hands upon to move it around, to move the glass around the board to spell out the letters. So essentially, from that point, we can already see that there is some evidence which is proven and demonstrated that the Ouija board does actually work in terms of the planchette moving. Now you may be asking yourself, is that good enough? To which I would probably answer you, yes. Why would that be good enough? Surely the purpose of using the Ouija is to contact spirits. But as I've already pointed out in my last video, the existence of spirits, angels, gods, demons and the rest of it cannot necessarily be proven within any scientific framework. It is open to too many questions of a epistemological and ontological nature, which means that we cannot properly answer them, and it's only up to religious people to provide their own answers in accordance with their religion. But does that actually make the Ouija completely and utterly impotent as a tool? The short answer to that would be no. People do use the idiomotor effect psychologically, either via pendulum dowsing or the Ouija device, for their own forms of psychological experimentation and investigation. All right, now this is called idiomotor effect. Idio, idea, motor movement. The idea moves in. That, in its own right, can have some benefit. But precisely what that is, is up to the individual experimenter to work out for themselves as a result of academic study and experimentation. If you take either life or the Ouija board too seriously, there's a strong danger that you could go slightly mad. But what actually happens in a psychic party when groups of people gather together and all of them place their index finger on the planchette? What happens then? Well, what I've experienced from ghost hunting events is that after a few minutes, a bit of a change happens in the atmosphere of the room. It's as if every single person suddenly realizes subconsciously what is going on. It's as if some parts of the subconscious mind of all the individuals seems to latch on to the fact that communication should be happening of sorts. And whether it is the idiomotor effect or some form of psychological force or whether it is some kind of spirit force acting through the idiomotor effect to make the Ouija itself act is open to interpretation. However, the fact of the matter is that the planchette actually moves. 
I personally don't feel confident about turning around to you and saying, yes, there is definitely a spirit which is contacting or communicating via the Ouija. However, I have had some particular seances in which certain apparent information appeared which seemed to have some kind of relevance. However, the usefulness of the information coming from the Ouija has to be taken with a very big pinch of salt. When you personally do a seance with the Ouija, you've got to think about what you're expecting. You've got to think about how easy you are to be pleased. Some people, for instance, are very easily pleased when nothing happens. Oh my God, absolutely nothing's happened. That's so spooky. Some individuals make the mistake of interpreting everything that comes through the Ouija as being something that it is not. C. Z. T. Oh my word, that must mean the library. And some individuals are so terrified and superstitious and fearful that even if the slightest thing happens, they are likely to go into hysterics. D. Oh my God, the devil's here. For some people, no matter what happens or does not happen, there will always be some kind of superstitious fear and dread, often associated with the mythology of the Ouija. Now take into account that over the years, the Ouija board has developed um, a great quantity of mythology around it. Urban mythology, superstitious and religious mythology. But in every case, it's still mythology. I have never in my entire life seen a green scaly demon come out of the Ouija board and breathe fire out of its arse. I have never in my entire life witnessed any form of spontaneous combustion as a result of the use of a Ouija board. I have never in my entire life experienced a residual haunting in a property after using the Ouija device. We've also got to think very carefully about the skill of analysis and the, the objective level of reasoning of the people who get involved with Ouija. I once knew a girl who was terrified of Ouija boards and regarded them as evil. When she was young, she did a number of seances with some friends of hers and those friends died shortly afterwards. It was her assumption that the Ouija and the spirits which came through as a result of the Ouija seance were responsible for the death of these people. However, these people who died were of a very badly behaved type and they would engage in activity that was in fact dangerous and or inappropriate. So we have to ask ourselves whether it was really the spirits of the Ouija or whether it was the innate naughtiness of the individuals concerned which actually killed them. My interpretation would be the latter, not the former. So can you actually get any useful or usable information from the Ouija? Well, sometimes yes and sometimes no. Let me put it to you like this. If you want to find a plumber, would you be better off looking in the yellow pages or using the Ouija? There is always a better way to get information than to use any tool of divination. And yes, I would say that some people are prone to either become addicted or to develop some kind of weird superstitious fear and dread as a result of using the Ouija and not applying intelligent analysis prior to using it and after using it. The Ouija is a great way of bringing people together holding contacting the dead parties on Halloween at midnight. Or just something else to do when your favorite TV show isn't on. It can hold people together, can give you shared experiences, and sometimes it can be fun. And yes, you can get some scary moments too and some very interesting coincidences. But when you're using the Ouija, alone or with friends, tell yourself, it's the idiomotor effect. That's called idiomotor response. And from your response, I can see that actually you're a very good translator.